What's going on D2LOD fans? Today, we are going to examine my gold find barb. Now, this is gonna be done on the realm. And by that, I mean like US East, or you know, if you're a US West player or Europe, this this build right here is, is meant for Battle.net. I've seen some sort of what I like to call fantasy builds out there. I call them that because yes, there are builds that are faster at, uh, at farming gold. You can get more runs in, but uh, the runs don't tend to last very long anyway. And if you're actually playing on the realm, if you're playing on Battle.net, you really don't want to create games too quickly or else you'll kind of, you'll risk getting a realm down. That being said, I think this build is kind of ideal for the realm. Uh, not only is it ideal for game time creation, but there's there's certain things that I think make it the best uh, gold find build regardless. I'm just gonna go over the gear relatively quickly. Most gold find builds, especially for barbarians, will look very similar. However, there's a key factor in in making your gold find barb really stand out, and it's, it really falls down to four items. Those four items are your helm, amulet, belt, and boots. So you could use a uh, Immortal King's helmet, but this actually is a little better. This is more gold find than you could get on your IK helm. You got a little lucky with this. Um, I actually ironically shopped this uh, with all of the gold that I found from my gold find barbarian. I shopped this and it came up as a magic circlet with um, I believe plus two barbarian skills and 68 extra gold find. Put it through the Larzic socket quest. It got two sockets and hey, now we're able to put two lems in it. Onto the amulet. Uh, this amulet right here actually is pretty sweet. Not only does it give a lot of resistances to the two most crucial resistances in these runs, which is fire resist and lightning resist, but it also has nearly the max that you can possibly get on a rare amulet for gold find or really any amulet. This also rolled 18 to strength, which is, which is pretty important for this build, uh, which we'll get to in a minute. The next part is boots. A lot of people like to use Inferno Strads because they can roll up to, I believe, 80% extra gold from monsters. They do give you plus extra maximum fire resist, which is also pretty important. But I don't find that the resists are, you know, if you have your resistances maxed, like uh, most of most of my gold find barbarians are, uh, you it's typically not a huge problem. It's not it's not something that's that's make or break. You would rather have boots that have 30% faster run lock so you can move around quicker. And you can also find some like I've done here with MF, which is also clutch for farming traving call runs. In hell, you can actually drop some pretty decent keepable items. Facets drop a lot, like the, the unique jewel. Um, that's a very common item. Depending on those rolls, those can be, you know, definitely keepable for sure. And then the final piece on to the belt. A lot of people use gold wrap. It's sort of like the cookie cutter build for gold find barbs. Uh, they use gold wrap, which can roll 80% extra gold find. Doesn't really give you much else for benefits though. This rolled, however, 24% faster hit recovery, which is insane. When your mercenary is doing all the killing, you're just kind of sitting back as a support character. You don't want to, you know, be taking too many shots and taking too long to recover. Sometimes that can mean the difference of life or death for your mercenary. This also rolled 19 to strength, which again, we're getting there. That's gonna be pretty important here real soon. Uh, and as you can see, it rolled a, just a phenomenal roll on resist. So that's just a, that's an insane belt. And you can also, in both of these items, the belt and the boots that I just showed you, you can get just about as much gold fine as you can with sort of the cookie cutter items that most people put there. That being said, those are the items that stand out, I think, in my build. Six limbed, uh, some people do crystal swords. I've actually chosen dimensional blades. If you actually look at this character with another character, he's almost completely strength bugged. He looks like he's naked or isn't wearing any items. I kind of like that effect. That's why I've chosen dimensional blades here. And that's why all of the strength buffs from you know the amulet and the belt are pretty important. I could do without one or the other to meet the 75 strength requirement for this, but you can't do without both if you want to go all vitality build, which is what this is. There's two of those. There's the Wealth Mage Plate, Dual Dwarf Stars. There's nothing better for gold find uh, in that slot. And it's the same with Chance Guards. These gives 200% extra gold find. There's nothing really better for that slot. The inventory is pretty sweet. 
Ideally, you want to fill out all of your small charm slots with these charms right here. All of mine are 10 gold fine down here and give plus to various resists. I probably could swap some of these out for, you know, more poison resist, which is also important. Believe it or not, you get hit with all of the elements in in uh, Traven Call. Geed's Fortune, obviously this can roll up to 160% extra gold for monsters. This one rolled 157, a near perfect roll for the next attribute, which is Magic Find, a nice little bonus for your, uh, for your gold find barb and it rolled a perfect reduce all vendor prices by 15%. That's also good if you are actually gambling with the character that you're, you're gold finding with. Also pretty cookie cutter for most of these charms. It's just Warcry Grand Charms with mad gold find on them. And then I have a little bit of spice over here. We have an all resistance plus 15 with 37% extra gold for monsters. The Warcries isn't necessarily as important as people crack it up to be, I don't think. You'll also notice in my inventory, I wanna point this out, some people like to max their inventory out and put like, they like to put their Haradric cube here and that allows them four more spots to put charms or whatnot. I don't like doing that for a couple of reasons. A, it's kind of clunky to be out in the field and have to open your cube and also pick up, you know, pick up an item, put it in your cube, open your cube, go to your belt, identify it, then you have to click, exit out, throw it out of your cube. If you're gonna be picking up items, it's just a huge inconvenience. So, you know, it, it ends up creating so much time, you know, making so much more time on the runs. I don't think it's worth it. Uh, but yeah, let's get into the actual skill breakdown. Find item is probably the most important skill in the build. 19 or 20 hard points into that. The other skill that you'll wanna max, or that I have maxed here, is battle orders. Uh, for obvious reasons, I think a lot of uh, bar builds do that. One into battle command, and then I maxed war cry. There's two ways that we're basically going to support our mercenary when we're doing these runs, and war cry is probably the most important. As you can see, it has all of these synergies. Pick your favorite one. Put some points into that, one point into these combat mastery skills. And the only combat skill that I invested a one hard point into was leap. That way we can stun. If we get mana burned, we can easily just switch to leap and not have to suck up mana with Warcry. And that just as effectively keeps the monsters off of your mercs so that he can focus on one at a time. I'll show you the items very quickly on my mercenary. These are also pretty cookie cutter. Uh, that is a ethereal upped crown of thieves right there. It rolled perfect extra gold find, so I socketed it, put a lem in it. That is an e-bugged Archon Plate, nearly perfect. And then Reaper's Toll. A lot of people like uh, Breath of the Dying Warpike, which hits for massive damage. There is a certain drawback to that though. If the monster is immune to physical damage, your EBOTD Warpike isn't gonna do anything to him. So that's why I use Reaper's Toll. Uh, it actually has a you know one third chance to cast a level one decrepify. That is actually a very important skill because when you run into Ismail Vilehand sometimes is actually immune to physical and that will rip away his physical immunity. Without further ado, let's get into some runs here. Let's check out how this guy works. So we're gonna go to Trav and Call. I have bow sticks on my switch over here and they also have life tap charges. So that's very rarely important, but sometimes it is. Sometimes when you run into a physically immune monster, it can actually, uh, your, your mercenary is gonna possibly take a lot of damage, or if you run into a conviction or a monster, your merc could take a lot of damage. So uh, life tap just helps him get back in the game. And as far as the strategy goes, this is sort of the ideal spot that you want these, these uh, council members, is just right here by the door. And then you can war cry every once in a while. So we're just gonna sit back. Look for some mana potions to replenish our mana after getting after war crying so much and getting mana burned. And there we go. That's basically one run right there. The first run here though, it looks like we got uh, almost 900,000 gold, which I will admit is slightly above average. You should expect to consistently get around 600K. Results are gonna vary because it's never guaranteed what a monster is gonna drop for gold. All your gold find does is just guaranteed that it's going to multiply that number by a certain percent. You might've seen me do this in the other run. I like to go into the Durance level one. 
Uh, and the reason I do that is because we don't have Enigma and we can't teleport on our enemies and reset our Merc's position. So one thing that will reset your Merc's position is if you enter a new area, set our Merc right to where we are by going back into Dragon Call. And that just kind of puts us in this spot, which is a pretty ideal spot for, um, for you know, trapping these guys, getting them all kind of in one area so that the Merc can just move from one to the next. And once he cleans up the other council members, then we'll just let him tackle Ismail Vilehand while we identify these items. Just makes for an efficient run. Look at that. We were just talking about this. Rainbow facet jewels. And first couple of runs we find one. So there it is. Uh, this this is also why, you know, the, the sort of inherent MF that you get with this. When your mercenary makes the kill, you have just about 300 MF that you're killing these council members with. So it's just sort of inherently there. You know what I mean? And you run into just crazy stuff, you know, just like this, where you, you hit alt and you see a field full of like decent items that you can identify and, and uh, like I said, potential keeps. And everything's good. And back to Traven Call. This is also a really good place to have them uh, for leaping because you just push all of these monsters right back up against the wall so they can't do anything, they're stun locked and then your merc can just clean them up. If you had a higher level leap, it's possible if you get the right angle you can just push them too far back and then it just gets inconvenient. Alright, let's go pop these bodies. And see what we get. And nothing too huge for items so far this round. I'm gonna pick that up because one thing that I also like to do with uh, this character is just imbue stuff. Use the cube for crafting. So run number two we made uh, just under 600,000 which is about what we would expect. And that actually maxes our inventory. And we'll go to Act 4, save and exit. Alright, so as you can see, this run right here, we um, actually more than maxed out our inventory gold. And I can't remember exactly how much we had left over, but uh, you know, from the last run that didn't fit in our stash, but as you can see, this would have clearly been a maxed inventory after, um, you know, after only a couple of runs. So it's very impressive. What I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to pull this gold right up here. And then what we can do is go do some gambling. So it looks like we have another council member down here. We're just going to leave him alone. It's not very convenient to get our mercenary down there, so... It's better use of our time to just go up and... I am overburdened. Just start doing some gambling. So, we've maxed our inventory gold. And now, it's time to gamble it away. Also an interesting point with the way that I gamble with this character. 
If you notice, we touched base on, or a, a little bit on, my items that I have on my Switch, right? Uh, you'll notice they're very small items. Like, they don't take up much space. They give plus three to War Cries, and you know, of course they have life tap chargers, which can be useful, but at the same time, they don't take up a lot of space. If you end up finding so many items that you, you know, are tacking out your stash, it's really inconvenient to have like two Heart of the Oaks, uh, you know, in your on your switch for battle orders when you can't actually gamble at that point because you might not have enough room left in your stash. So what we like to do is just keep these items really small so that they always take up, you know, the same amount of space or less in this case than the edge bow that we switch out to. Managing your space like that can actually just be very good for efficiency over the long run. There we go. Now you're looking at it after, you know, five quick runs, our inventory is maxed, which is, that's pretty standard. And as you can see, this is the coolest part about having a gold find barbarian, right? We found like all of these decently cool items. I would argue this is probably one of the more unique, fun builds uh, that also has just inherent magic find on it. Here are the spoils for today on top of maxing our inventory twice. So we found some 37 chance guards. That's not bad. We found a rainbow facet jewel that almost rolled perfect for poison. Kingpin find right here. This might not look too special to a lot of people, but this is actually a really, really good game. Low level dueling Amazon uh, amulet. Like that's that's really cool, man. That is a that is like a solid three plus point amulet right there. Maybe four point. And then just a you know generic 10% extra gold find for monsters. Because you know, we like to find gold find items while we're gold finding. But uh, yeah, that's uh that's it. I really I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the build. And if you haven't already, check me out on Twitch. If you haven't seen the YouTube channel already, check that out. I post some dueling videos on there, stream videos, and occasionally videos like this where we talk about builds and, uh, and, and show them off. Thanks so much for joining me. I appreciate this. I hope you like it, and uh, we'll catch you next time.